I begin to record uh, the um, talks today. Yes, um, Ming, please. All right, so thank you very much, Dr. Van, for uh, inviting me to give this talk. And it's very nice to have this opportunity to talk about uh, to, uh, to talk about my work. So you can hear me well, right? Yes. So the title of my uh, the title of my talk is uh, regularized information geometric and optimal transport distances between covariance operators and Gaussian processes. So uh, information geometry and optimal transport are, are two very big fields in mathematics now. Very um, and there's a lot of interest now in 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 machine learning uh, on using uh, the theories and techniques from information geometry and optimal transport for uh, solving learn machine learning problems. And so I'm just, uh, uh, so of course it's actually, uh, they, they are very, uh, do very large fields. There's a lot of ideas. I'm just gonna focus on some very uh, special uh, concepts in uh, from information geometry and optimal transport and into the, some of the distances. And in the very special settings, in the setting of, in the Gaussian setting, Gaussian, Gaussian processes and covariance operators. So what I'm going to present, um, uh, are going to be very concrete. Okay, let me actually, I think I should go to the uh, the full screen mode, actually. Right? The full screen mode. Okay. So now, so uh, the, what I'm going to present is uh, the generalization of the following geometric perspective of propulsion measures in RN. Some of the remaining distances, the divergences and optimal transport distances um, when infinite dimensional Gaussian measures and Gaussian processes, in particular in the reproducing kernel universe space or RPHS setting where we have very concrete formulas for computation. So now the motivation for studying these geometric structures. So of course, you know, we have uh, Gaussian measures and, and uh, so we call it a set of uh, SPD, uh, symmetric positive definite matrices. So these are the Gaussian measures that appear everywhere in mathematics and in statistics probability, uh, but they also have like, numerous uh, practical applications. So there are a lot of applications in Venn imaging there are many applications in computer vision and application in radar signal processing and brain computer interfaces, uh, et cetera. So actually there's a, there's a huge number of applications utilizing these objects. And uh, so a lot of the applications, uh, uh, so a lot of the, the things that I'm going to talk about are actually originally motivated by problems in computer vision, kind of applications in computer vision and also in brain imaging. So very briefly, I'm gonna talk about a very special, so I'm just gonna focus on the Gaussian set. So let's consider the set uh, so the set of SPD matrices, matrices of psi n by n, and let's consider the set of zero mean Gaussian densities uh, on Rn. So this, uh, so of course the Gaussian densities uh, with zero mean uh, is, is given by this formula here, and is completely characterized by the covariance matrix sigma theta. And this is actually a symmetric positive definite, so it's uh, completely characterized by n times n plus one over two um, uh, parameters. And so this is uh, like an open subset in 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 Rn of n plus of, uh, times n plus one over two. So it's a, uh, it's a smooth manifold and we can, if I uh, uh, remind a metric on it, so this one is a official um, um, a round metric here, sort of information metric here, it's by this formula. So this is a very famous uh, quantity. And in, in this case, it can be computed in a very nice way uh, because essentially everything is, for the Gaussian setting, we can compute everything uh, completely. So it's a central object in information geometry, of course. And so we, uh, we can have an explicit expression for the official round metric uh, in this case, and it corresponds to this probably a fine invariant remaining metric on, on the set of SPD matrices of n band C n plus uh, simple source n. So, so everything here is uh, has been uh, possible, and I say everything is actually can be considered uh, can be considered uh, explicitly. So now we just focus on the set of SPD uh, matrices. So there are a lot of uh, possible, a lot of uh, uh, geometric structures on, on this uh, on this set we have so in various applications that we actually we have to come um, in various applications where we use uh, SPD matrix uh, or, or Gaussian density as a form of data representation we would like to be able to compare uh, um, these uh, the different SPD matrices so there are a lot of different distances or divergences that we can we can use so a very common um, so people it, it turns out so of course we can always we can always uh, Computer distance using, for example, the Frobenius uh, distance, which is actually very simple and very fast to compute. But because it's a, the Frobenius, you say yes. the R in invariant Riemann metric because of that, or what do you see? Because of it, you have the cone structure. R in invariant which of uh, transformation? Oh, you have like the transformation of uh, A times uh, A times B times uh, A times B times B times Schwarz, for example. If you transpose by like, it's like uh, the congruent transformation actually. So because, and, uh, that, that, 
Then you think everything is the same. Everything is uh, the remains the same. So do you mean that's a transformation affine structure because you have the a symmetric plus plus is a cone and that you take the on trans. Yes. Uh, so explain in the geometric term, yeah. That means that's the oh, okay, okay, okay. transformation of ambient space that preserving the cone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, otherwise, uh, what is the uh, affine? Okay. Yeah? So okay, 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 okay. And so, um, and so, so given, so, uh, so given this, uh, so given, given this, uh, so metric, this metric here, given this uh, Riemannian uh, Riemann metric here, uh, this becomes a Riemannian manifold, and we have the, um, so it has a, uh, that's a, that's a unique geodesic, that's a unique geodesic joining any, any, any um, matrices A and B, and it has the closed form formula, it has a nice and closed form formula. And the distance also has a nice and close form formula here. And so it has a lot of, uh, so actually it has been studied a lot. So this, this, uh, uh, it has been studied a, a lot in mathematics and it, it corresponds to the Fischer distance between the, like, the, the zero mean Gaussian densities on, on RN. And uh, so it has been used, actually it has been used in the application I was talking about, in, 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 brain, computer, in, in brain computer interfaces, in brain imaging, and also in computer vision, because actually they kind of they represent the data using uh, using um, SPD matrices in those in those applications. And so actually this uh, so the distance is actually what we what we want in terms of the distance. We want to compare the uh, we want to compare the uh, uh, for example like the two uh, two objects in computer vision, for example. So now so this one is actually. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's actually this is a uh, uh, respect to a Fisher geometry, yeah. Oh, so, that, uh, oh, so it's actually it's actually it's actually kind of basically uh, the, the 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 same. Actually, we have like this uh, basically a half a half. It's basically actually the same. Let's say let's say we have a correspondence, right? We have the uh, we have the um, because we have the correspondence of the uh, the the the, uh, the, the, the two sets the two sets that we have like, the the Gaussian density and the and the, the and the set of SPD matrix is actually that's uh, basically actually the same. Oh, but I, I put like the, 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 the kind of, uh, the, like this, like, like the uh, half here actually, because that's a kind of a, like a constant of a half here, but the basic the price is actually the same. Uh, just what I mean, because uh, if you are going to a lot of the, uh, some, um, how to say, a uh, conference by Mark Berosko, yeah? Uh, and the same also, so he only also there is a big group of fan of Winbear. And the Winbear is the such kind of, inv I find environmentally on the goal of the, Space. So that must be the same thing, right? Because Xavier Penek, Xavier Penek. Okay. No. Is this Xavier Penek? Yeah, Penek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about his actually his, his like the next one is actually kind of uh, actually the work from his group actually the something called the law of linear metric actually is actually by his group. Okay. So because so so okay so now if you if you look at this actually it's just kind of more uh, okay if you look at this formula here actually if you have a lot uh, if you have a so you have, you compute you have the, the, the distance formula. It actually looks very nice, right? but you have a very large set of uh, if you have a very large set of, uh, of matrices to compute the distances, for example, it actually is it's, it's not uh, it can be computationally um, expensive actually. So uh, so what are the motivation for actually? So this actually this is the last thing you know, the Kubernetes Sophia and people. This is actually is a bit panic. Um, so actually, I so actually I, I know him actually wasn't really well. <laughs> uh, and so he, he so, so his group actually, but actually they were working on, on actually the company, the brain matching uh, application actually, and they uh, have something else called the low linear metric. So in this setting, so actually I don't I don't know about to put the, the expression for the metric here, but um, it's, a, it's a bit simpler than the than the Riemannian uh, and and this high uh, invariant metric here. It, it has um, so so the the geodesic actually has a simple form. It has a simple form, and also the the geodesic distance has a simple form. So just log a minus log b the Frobenius norm instead of instead of this formula. So it's um if we have a large set of uh, if you have a large set of matrices and it's like and it's faster it's a, it's faster for compute to be a high invariant distance, and uh, and more importantly uh, when we talk about like if we want to use super machine for example. Then we can we can use this distance to define uh, um, various positive definite kernels for some of the Gaussian kernels. So we can actually we can define the Gaussian kernel using this uh, using this distance here. Yeah? And so it's always positive definite for every sigma. It's not the case with the affine invariant Riemann and this is not the case. So this is actually this is a match. This is um this is a, a manifold with a uh, um, non positive curvature. This uh this uh with, with under this uh, metric here. Whereas this one is actually flat. 
And so it's, uh, we can define various positive definite kernels, uh, like because we always define the Gaussian kernel using, using this uh, distance. So actually, this is, a, this is why this actual, this, one, this thing, uh, this uh, um, distance here is actually uh, kind of important for applications because we can actually, uh, and it has been applied actually um, a lot um, because we can use the perfect machine, for example, with this, uh, using this distance. So now uh, I would like to, okay, so, I, so now let, let's see whether we can generalize this to the, uh, to the infinite dimensional setting where we have, uh, okay, so I'm gonna go very, I'm, I'm gonna go slow, okay, I will not go fast, probably would not, have, uh, I actually have a, probably would not have time to cover a lot of things, but anyway, I, would, I wouldn't cover, you know, uh, whatever, whatever I can, okay, within, within the time limit. So, so now I would like to be able to generalize it to the, to the case where the, uh, the self-transfer of the self the self-transfer of the infinite dimensional, um, uh, operator, right? So now the problem well, well, for this distance is actually the problem is actually so we, here we have so now this is log here is actually the is a, is a principal logarithm, right? So if we have an SPD matrix and we just compute the A is given by uh, we compute the, the, the spectral decomposition and then we compute the log by using uh, also like the computing the log of the of the diagonal of the of the eigenvalues, right? And and also uh, and then and then use the, the spectral decomposition. Uh, so if A is actually a strictly positive uh, Hilbert-Schmidt operator, then the eigenvalues will go to zero, right? And then so one over lambda k goes to infinity, and also log goes to negative infinity. So everything is actually unbounded. A in dot is actually unbounded, and log A is unbounded, right? So it's not. Um, so it's not. Uh, so so these things are no longer no longer defined. And so what we do is actually so we want to so for example in the simplest setting we want to generalize this system, for example. To the case when A and B are self joint for Stephen Bush mirror on the super in the space. And so, uh, so if we need to generalize the, the principal matrix lock function, and we need to generalize the, the forbearance in a product norm. And it turns out that actually the Bush norm is actually not sufficient for this purpose. And I will naturally I will uh, explain why. So the first problem is actually, of course, we have the unbounded base of lock A, right? So we have so the lock of uh, lambda K goes to uh, negative infinity. And so, so one way in uh, one way to do to, to do this, uh, that might be other ways I don't know, but this is actually one way, is we uh, we kind of do regularization. So instead of uh, log of a, we have to log of a plus gamma i for some kind of quicker than zero. And so if we do this, and we have compute log of uh, gamma lambda k plus gamma, and so this is uh, always bounded. And so this object here, this log of a plus gamma i is bounded. So this one is good. Uh, that might be other ways. I don't. Maybe maybe uh, Doctor Bond can come can, can have some other ideas. Anyway, mm -hmm. so uh, okay. So now let's compute the uh, instead of log a minus log b for minus norm, we compute the uh, inverse Schmidt norm of log of a plus gamma i log of b plus e y. Now, but the problem is actually log of uh, the identity operator is not inverse Schmidt because the, the inverse Schmidt norm of i is actually equal to infinity. Mm -hmm. And so, so for this reason, we actually the if we compute the, the for gamma i not equal to one, the Hilbert Schmidt number log of a plus gamma i is actually so it's actually equal to infinity, and so uh, so this is actually not something uh, not desirable actually. So it's not well defined. So so to resolve it, one idea is actually was proposed by this uh, of a lot of Tunga. This was in um, it's called something called the extended Hilbert Schmidt norm. So. So what other thing that propose is actually we have like we compute the, the extended Hilbert numbers defined by a plus gamma i the norm uh, of the extended Hilbert norm square is equal to the norm of p square plus gamma square, and um, at the so actually so the other I was actually considered kind of the was doing this in the complex setting actually so kind of more general so I'm actually still going to be in the real in the real setting. So now we have the inner product of a plus gamma i plus new i to the Hilbert number of a, uh, a b and plus uh, gamma times new and so. So basically, yeah, scalar operators come my orthogonal to the Hilbert-Schmidt operators under, under this inner product. And so now, if we do this, then the Hilbert-Schmidt number of the identity operator, the extended Hilbert-Schmidt of the identity operator is equal to one. And so it's like uh, so it's like a second form of compactification, if you if you will. And so so I actually consider this set of uh, um, a plus gamma i uh, with uh, greater than with a star is equal to uh, well, self choice operator. So this one is actually the, the, the generalization of the set of uh, symbols n, where a is the Hilbert Schmidt operator and gamma belong to r. So and gamma belong to r. And so uh, and and he uh, and, and then he then proposed the the, uh, the generalization of the affine invariant uh, matrix. So we kind of the so the so the, the kind of the, the matrix looks basically very uh, very similar except that we have uh, 
we have, of course, we have I plus gamma I and plus new I plus five, everything is actually almost, uh, it actually has a very similar form. And the distance also has a very similar, similar form, except that we all just have all the regularization here. So everything here is well, uh, everything here is well defined if we use the extended in the street mark. And that would be kind of, so, kind of like, so he calls actually extended a unit sized uh, in the street operator. So if we do this and everything is well defined and we can, uh, we can uh, apply the same idea for the, for the, for the long collision distance, so we can do the same. We can, uh, uh, so we can compute like the, the um, the, the, the extended Himmler Schmidt mid distance of log of A plus gamma I plus a minus log of mu I, and then we can define the inner product as well. And so everything here is everything here is, is, is well defined. Right? And we can show that actually the setup uh, of this positive definite unitized Himmler Schmidt operator is actually, it can be, uh, there's, also like a, there's also like a vector space structure associated uh, so with the use this uh, form of distance and, and metric, which I don't have it here, but it can, it can be shown. So now, so these formulas are, are, are kind of very abstract formulas because these are all kind of these are all operators, right? So uh, how we can how we uh, so let's see whether we can we can apply uh, we can actually use these formulas and and, and compute something that we can actually apply in practice. Now, so one uh, one one setting in which we can we can do it is actually in the reproducing kernel Hamburg's uh, uh, space setting. So there are actually there are a few. But there are actually two different settings. We have the, the distance and divergence to be RKHS covariance operators, which I will explain now. We can also compute the distance and divergence between Gaussian processes and, um, and covariance operators of uh, random processes in general. So these actually both involve the RKHS methodology. So, so, there, are actually, so there are two different kind of uh, closely related uh, formulations. Um, so I want to talk about this, uh, the RKHS covariance operators first. Chef Marvin, Ming, so you are consider yes. only in base space that are reproducing a kernel in base space, right? That's in your top. And that the uh, general formula is working for any in base space, at least if you are uh, not. And the, the formula is for any, uh, yeah, the formula is for any, uh, the general, the, the, the actual formula is for any in space. Yeah. But I'm, but for the, for the computation, uh, for the computation, I'm, I'm kind of passing on the reproducing. Uh, um, so it's actually, yeah, it has to be just like a special case. It's a special case okay. of the, uh, the previous formula. But then, but now, now I will have like very concrete formulas that I can actually, uh, can actually compute uh, immediately. So suppose we have a positive affinity kernel. Actually, maybe I should have. Uh, actually, I don't know whether the, how much uh, that and, and how uh, and other people are familiar with RKHS actually because, <laughs> because maybe I should have like more materials for the RKHS here. Okay, but anyway, let me. Okay, anyway, so uh, okay, so let K be a positive definite corner on 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 on, on so like on a set uh, x x cross x for example. Let's say x is a nice. Uh, uh, like Rn, for example, like a nice uh, matrix specific Rn for. So let's say X is Rn and, and HK is a positive definite on Rn like uh, like the Gaussian kernel. And let, let HK let, let, let HK be the corresponding RPHS, the reducing number space. And so K, the, this kind of K here induces a feature map from X to HK. So if X is equal to KX, so KX is a function so that's the, we have if we apply KX to, to Y, we have KXY. So it's a, it's um it's a, just a very simple function. So this one is called the canonical feature map, and HK is a feature in machine learning. It's called the feature space, and this uh, this uh, is so called the canonical features, uh, canonical feature space. So that we have the inner product of Vx and Vy in HK, which is equal to Kxy. And as soon as that we have a, a, a rho is the Borean probability uh, distribution on X, so that we have the, the second moment uh, of Vx with respect to rho is a, which is just equal to Kx x d rho x is just less than infinity. So if we assume that. Then uh, okay, just a moment. Okay, and now suppose that we we sample like uh, n points, uh, n points of x according to rho. So uh, we have like the uh, so informally this one we can consider this as a as data matrix for example, and then so informally this phi here if we use this phi here we map like x to phi x, which is like an infinite feature matrix uh, for example, just in, very informally. So it has like phi x up to phi x m. And, uh, and formally, this VAC can be considered as not a linear operator from RM to HK. So just like we have um, like VX map W to function W I VX I. So if we have, so if we assume this kind of the second finite, the second moment here, then we can also, we can define this, uh, the mean of VX, uh, of the mean of VX, we take a row, so for example, the new phi here is going to be X to be row X onto HK, and we can also, 
And given, given the data set X, we can have the imperial community as well. So just to put a summation of one of the M three X, I'll just do one of the M three X and one of the M five and just a vector of ones. And uh, for the linear kernel, for example, that if you have the linear kernel, then let's do, uh, we just have like new VX, just a VX, and then just a one of the M summation of X, particularly average. So this actually, this mean here is also used a lot in RKHS, so it's going to meet embedding in, in machine learning, sorry. And then we can also compute the, uh, we can define the, this operator as well. And so it's a uh, skip over this object here, and we can also compute the other uh, empirical confidence operator given the, given the data, given the data set um, XI, uh, given the data X1 to XI. So it this can be written compactly in this form. So it's, it's actually, it's an, so the empirical uh, operator, for example, is now, uh, is, it has finite rank, even what well, is infinite uh, dimensional, if H pay is the Gaussian kernel, then the, the dimension is infinite. So it's actually the infinite dimensional operator, but it's actually a finite rank operator. It's not defined, and, and in, the, in the very simplest case, when we put the linear kernel, then we just have a sample coverage matrix of phi x is reduced to, uh, to Cx. So phi x is reduced to Cx. So this object here, is uh, is yeah it's actually used for uh, so it's actually defined because in, in general this fee this map fee here in general is implicit so this uh, object here is also implicit and so we actually we carry out the computation via the um, via the grand matrices so now uh, let's return to this uh, Lockheed mean distance between our DHS coverage operators so so this distance here or the same for the other distance this distance here between like uh, suppose we have like two uh, Two of these RTHS coverage of the CPX and CPY to uh, data sets X and Y, then we can compute this distance uh, in those forms in, in terms of the uh, matrices. So KX, uh, uh, the entries of, uh, so, yeah, well, so the entries of KX for some of KX are XJ and KY, KY, and and so on. So now I, I, the formula is a kind of uh, kind of, kind of, kind of complicated, but I just want to show you, if you want to show you, that's, that's the best of those forms formula in terms of this gram matrix. It's, uh, it's uh, kind of a bit messy, but we can compute everything. So this actually has been applied. We actually apply this in um, in the past image classification. Uh, so this one is actually uh, a while ago, actually. So it's gonna have a two layer kernel machine for image classification. So so first, so the, the now, so I was, I was telling you about like this, uh, the log Euclidean uh, distance, and we can actually define uh, we can define kernels using this uh, log Euclidean distance. It's not the case with the, the other like the Fisher distance, because it's, it's not always possibly definite for every for every um, uh, parameter of the Gaussian kernel. But we can do that with the log Euclidean distance. And we can do that with its log Hilbert-Schmidt distance as well. We can define the Gaussian kernel as well. So we can use it to define something we call the um, so this one is like a two layer kernel machine for image classification. So now we can define, uh, so for suppose we have to classify these images, for example. So we, here we have uh, texture, we have uh, like, um, like rice, and we have like different materials, and we have like a fish, for example. We do this image classification, and so we, we can define a kernel K, for example, one Gaussian kernel here. Do we, so we extract the features from, from these images, and then we define a kernel on top of, uh, so this, uh, we're given a kernel, given a kernel in K1 here, it, uh, induces a feature map P, and so we apply this fee on top of this uh, on, on top of features checked from the images, and so this gives rise to a, go a governance operator, and we can do really, and then for, so each image is represented by one governance operator, and then we can uh, we can compute the, the the distance between the governance operator, and so if we have a distance matrix, and we can apply another kernel on top of this. So it's a two-layer kernel machine, and then we can do any kernel methods on top of this. So this is SVM classification. And so this one has been applied for various uh, kind of tasks in image classification. Uh, so this one is such a kind of the nearest one. So one of the time, it's kind of the computer and the recognition. So actually everything can be computed. So the, the thing is actually everything here is actually, every, uh, it's, so it's different from the, uh, from the setting of, for example, of deep neural networks, because everything here has a closed form formula. Everything here can be computed. So, um, so there's, uh, but anyway, but it's only two layer, okay? So this is a limitation, only two layers. Okay, so questions so far? Sivan, uh, you need to unmute your camera. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sorry. You have seen uh, 40 minutes. Okay, okay. But anyway, just, um, you know, if you have any questions, just, uh, just let me know actually because uh, yeah. So I think maybe I should have like more material. No, no, at, 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 at least that's a, I mean, now I only asked you too many questions and I, I'm afraid that's okay. a, you run out of time. 
No, it's okay. Don't worry. I, um, maybe I wouldn't. I would reduce the the, um, yeah. the amount of material. Oh, may I, I have may to make. Yes, ask a question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so about the you have the zero mean the Gaussian distribution uh, and you yeah. have the, it's a some kind of similar with the, the positive symmetric matrix. Yeah. And how about the the, the general Gaussian distribution? Do you have any connection to other? Like well, what, what do you mean? What, what do you mean, more, uh, like more? Oh, you know, I have oh. some kinds of the Norman with the arbitrary mean, yeah, Gaussian distribution, yeah. What is the distance? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I, I actually, that's that's no, that's no close. So we actually, I don't know because actually we have no close form formula for the uh, for the Fisher uh, for the Fisher distance. Actually, between two Gaussian, between general Gaussian. I, I don't think there's a close form formula. Uh, uh, so we, we have it for the for the Wasserstein distance. We have we have the we have the Gaussian formula for the for the between two Gaussians uh, for the for the Wasserstein distance. So we um so this actually has been worked out like a long time ago. But but I don't think to, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think actually there's a there's a close form formula for the for the Fisher Rao distance between two two um general Gaussian measures. So so um, so I don't know. So I don't I don't know the correspondence. Uh, it's uh, it's actually been this stretch because actually has been known for a long time. I like you have you know this because it's a famous uh, kind of concept for a long time. But actually, I, but I don't think I, I at least to the best of my knowledge, I don't think it. Uh, uh, there's there's a formula actually. We have a formula for the uh, for the uh, also for the, for the we have we have formulas for the general Gaussian uh, measures for the for the Bayon divergence for the Rayleigh divergence for the uh, for the process fine distance, but not for the Fisher Rao, uh, not for the Fisher Rao distance. So maybe I wouldn't. Okay. So okay. Okay. So, I better, uh, so maybe I would actually. I would skip the divergence, but I wouldn't go to the optimal transport. Is it? Yes. <laughs> okay. That is I would skip the divergence because actually there's a, there's a lot of too much material actually. Okay. So let's go to the optimal transport distance. Anyway, many of these things actually have been worked out by other people, so I'm, I would be quite quick. So now let's consider the, the optimal transport distance problem here. So so I think for this part I can go over quickly, right? We can. Uh, we can compute like suppose we have like a, a nice um, a several matrix. Let's say Rn first. Let's just say Rn, and and we have a nice post function. Uh, so in this case, we actually we are just going to consider the, the, the square post function. So because I want to consider the, the Gaussian matrix, and I, I I want to consider kind of the closed form formula for the Gaussian, and consider the set of all uh, probability measures on X. So then with the the optimal transform problem uh, between uh, two measures, uh, probability measures. Uh, New zero and new one of px is given by this uh, minimization problem here. So we're just gonna optimize it. the x the expected cost of cxy give uh the gamma xy well gamma is uh, uh it's a kind of well, gamma is the, the set of all joint measure between new zero and new one. And so of course this is a very famous problem. And it has been shown that if when we have like between zero uh, one and infinity, and suppose that the on this set um uh, B, B, PPX here of all uh, probability measures with finite moment over P, then this object here would uh, would be P here. Uh, only uh, PDP in between the zero and one to the uh, power of one over P is 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 distance. It's going to be like a fine distance. Uh, it's a metric on the set of PPX, and so it's a, it's a it has a very um, so uh, of course it's a very rich theory on this. So now let's just consider the I'm just going to consider the, the the setting of Gaussian. Okay. So now for the Gaussian setting, uh, suppose we have like uh, with a square plus function, we have the two Gaussian measures on our end. And so this one has a very uh, nice form formula. It has been worked out by various uh, authors in the, uh, about 40 years ago. So it has uh, this formula is given by this one. So in this case, we have the mean here. We have the, we have the mean. And uh, when, when the mean is the same, and we have this, the uh, Boris versus time distance. I suppose the Boris versus time distance, the Boris because actually has been used uh, in a lot of quantum information theory. Where it's a uh, classical thing called the Bures distance in, in, in quantum information theory. And also, it also has actually has a Riemannian metric. You can actually, uh, it also has a Riemannian metric structure, actually. So we can actually have, uh, so the metric is actually given by this formula here. And, and uh, it's also like the closed sum formula for the geodesic. So it has been also worked out like, uh, about 10 years ago. Okay. So now, and, and, and the nice thing about this is actually in the infinite dimensional setting, the formula is actually the same. Except we will not have the uh, Riemannian uh, metric structure anymore, but the formula, the, the distance, uh, the Wasserstein distance, the angle Wasserstein distance, is actually the same. It has the same formula because again, we have the trace. So everything here is actually still well defined. So everything is actually very nice. And so it has been applied actually in, kind of, uh, in some work, some of the work on Gaussian processes. Um, 
Um, and it's also the nice thing is actually it's also valid in the case when when uh, when the uh, when the the governance of the here are singular. So, so it doesn't because of this uh, this quantity is still very well defined. It doesn't have to be. They don't have to be strictly positive. Uh, but it's essentially not uh, not efficiently functional. So now, one thing about the optimal transportation is actually in general, it's actually the, the, the optimization is actually computationally challenging. That's a, that's a very rich theory. Yes, but actually, yes. You say just a, a note, um, a fresh differentiation. Can you uh, return the slide? Fresh differentiation. What is this, uh, this one? Uh, this co program operators. Uh, oh, but the set is actually not an open. The set is not an open set. This this set okay. of program like okay. uh, it's not it's not open actually. Okay, infinity times. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because you have the uh, yeah because actually it's kind of so actually this set is actually not an open set. So so it doesn't even have like the, the uh, it doesn't even have like the um the Riemannian uh, structure actually. But the oh. set is actually the set itself is not even not even open. Oh, yes. So now, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so is that not uh, continue, please? You were saying something? No. Okay. So, so now uh, the thing is okay. So now the optimal, the exact optimal transport theory is actually but that's a very rich theory. This actually is a huge theory. Uh, it actually has a longer history than information geometry. So, but in general, the computationally is actually demanding. And also, it has been shown that it can have like bad sample complexity. So it can be actually exponentially bad. And so uh, that's like a direction work of working in terms of entropic regularization, which we obtain like uh, so instead of just computing this uh, uh, kind of the um, expected value, like the denominator of the expected value of, uh, of C residue to gamma, we add a term here, which is called epsilon, the Kn divergence, gamma reflects to the joint uh, the product measure of mu and mu. And so, and so with this, with this actually, we can there's something called the Singhorn algorithm. And uh, so this problem can be solved. Uh, it's actually much uh, nicer to solve. And so actually, there's a bit a lot of work in, uh, in, in, in uh, especially in machine learning recently on, on this other entropic regularization, but in various other terms as well. And the thing is actually when we add like this term, scale term here, this uh, OTDP here between mu and mu is no longer zero. So it's actually neither distance for divergence. So one way to to, to obtain a, a diversion is actually to do a uh, form of uh, correction here. It's so only biasing, so which is minus like a half of OTDP mu mu and minus OTDP mu mu. So that actually has been a lot of work in, in various, uh, also like in, in also in density fashion in chemistry as well. And, and a, lot of, a lot of work in, in machine learning recently uh, uh, along on, on this uh, synchron divergence. So we would like to actually to be able to, to understand this, to, uh, to, understand, to have a concrete understanding of this. So, so we focus on the Gaussian setting. And that's, a, that's the reason why I'm actually talking about the Gaussian setting. And we actually, so we, we can actually work it out about in the finite dimension and infinite dimension setting. So it's actually quite, we have to solve formulas for, for everything in the Gaussian setting. So in the, in the Gaussian, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, okay, sorry, I have yeah, my, my, so in the finite dimensional setting has been worked out, um, like actually just, uh, just last year, actually kind of, uh, there has been like was a series of work which did appear last year. And so we can compute, we can, we can express this scale on average in gamma and, and, and the product measure of mu zero and mu one uh, using the, uh, the differential entropy edge. And so, and then we also use, uh, so there's something called the maximum entropy of Gaussian density. So the X has mean zero and governs uh, metric C and then the, um, the, the differential entropy of X is, is less than equal to this quantity with equality of even only if x is, is, is Gaussian. And so, so, this, uh, so this means that if b, 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 b is zero and b one are both, are both Gaussian, then this one is minimum only if gamma is, is Gaussian. So this means that the, the, uh, the, um, the optimal, the minimizer of this whole thing here, if we have two Gaussian, if mu zero and b one are both Gaussian, then the optimal, the, the minimizer has to be a Gaussian, has to be a Gaussian density. And so it has, it has to have this form. So it has uh, like the mean is the mean is between uh, the vector of uh, mu, uh, M1 and M2 and the, the covariance metric has to have this form and the KL divergence has to have this form here. And so we can, we can plug this in, we can plug this in, we can solve everything. So we can solve for the curl sum formula here. So everything has a nice curl sum formula. So we can uh, compute the uh, entropic distance. This one is, uh, is uh, it's called the entropic distance, but it's, remember that it's not a distance or divergence. 
And then we, with the direction, we often the divergence here, so it has a closed form group. Now this looks like it, uh, and here's a dimension, right? So it looks like it depends on the dimension, but it's actually not the case. Actually, it's not, it's dimension independent, actually, as we will show later on. So, so now, so let's go back, so let's go to the infinite dimensional setting now. So uh, I, I think actually has a, it has a formula so we can update the same formula. Basically, it's essentially the same. Um, so now, now we look, we look at the, end of the entropy here. Now this term here is no longer well defined because it, it doesn't generalize the infinite dimension actually because it's kind of the determinant here is kind of the product of all the eigenvalues with eigenvalues to go to zero. So this is not well defined. And all, but we can show, and so the, the kind of the right hand side of the, the, the expression of the KN divergence the infinite dimensional uh, thing here is not, it's not well defined. But nevertheless, this uh, this uh, this was in Newton for the which is always well defined. It can be infinite. It's always well defined, and and so we can we can actually show that if we have um, if we have two uh, Gaussian measure mu zero and uh, uh, we have sorry two of mu x and mu y, and we have like the joint measure of gamma zero here, and then the kind of the mutual function is uh, is the minimum if and only if this gamma here is is a Gaussian is a Gaussian. Uh, Joint Gaussian measure, and it has a, a particular a formula here where so the, the covariance of, of gamma has to relate to the covariance of uh, kind of the, the covariance uh, operator of, 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 of mu x and mu y uh, in a particular way. And so we can we can so if we can do as we can basically pose it in, in a very similar way as we thought. So the, the minimizer also has to be a joint Gaussian density, and we can compute we can plug everything in and we can compute the we have this optimization problem here. So you can, it's an infinite dimensional problem, yes, but we can actually solve it. And we can solve for this V here and we can have this uh, form. And alternatively, we have like a different, uh, map, I would say we have, that's a different way, way to solve it. But anyway, so it, ha it also has a closed form formula, except now that the word is, um, this M here is now the trespass operator. So here we have to have uh, like um, kind of high, so, so here everything is actually very fine. And, and then that here, of course, is now the is the flat home determinant. Um, and when at epsilon go to zero, we obtain the versus time distance, square versus time distance. So then when epsilon goes to infinity, we have uh, the, the, the square mean distance. Okay, just uh, so so anyway, so so we can we can actually solve for it explicitly. And so now also in the RKHS, we can also have a closed form formulas in the RK, in the RKHS. So we can we can uh, we can just plug everything in and um, so if we have something on the uh, uh, a characteristic kernel, for example, so that the, 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 the map between rho and mu, the map to the mean uh, phi rho here is injective, for like the Gaussian kernel, for example, then, and this actually, this, this object defines like a, a semi, uh, a semi metric, this, this um, single divergent semi kind of, um, defines like a semi metric between probability Gaussian, Borean probability Gaussian measures uh, uh, on X. And it has a closed form formula, if it has a closed form, if we have like, if we have like, for example, so, so we have like uh, a positive affinity kernel, for example. So as before, we can define the, the confidence of the RKHS confidence. We can also have the mean as well. So this we have the mean term as well. So we can uh, we can define like two Gaussian measures actually on the RKHS with uh, using the, the, the RKHS mean and RKHS confidence of the So we can define the distance here. So it has a closed form formula. It looks kind of massive, but it has closed form formula. And so and when when epsilon goes to infinity, then we just have the um, the distance between the two mean, and so this one is actually precisely something called the uh, the maximum mean discrepancy, in, in, but it has been used a lot in machine learning. And uh, and when epsilon goes to zero, we have something called the kernel versus time distance. So this one actually has been applied in computer vision uh, by by some group. Um, uh, so we actually kind of do this uh, up in the analysis in machine intelligence it? for for actually various uh, classification problems actually in computer vision. So it basically it's the kind of interpolation, it's interpolation between the two, between the two, uh, the two kind of um, square, actually, it's actually square distances, you can do square distances. But I'm, I'm actually, uh, so, so it's actually, so I, don't, I don't know whether it's actually, because actually we have like two square distances, so I, it's not clear whether actually this object here is a, is a metric, like the square, the square root of this might be a metric, but it's, uh, I don't know how to solve it. I don't know how to, how to show it. Uh, so, Ming, so you say that application in computer vision that a check a supervised the learning and using um, reproducing a kernel bed method, right? Or what? It, it, it can be, it can be supervised. So, so actually, they, they were doing like using supervised learning, but um, 
So that they were kind of they were actually using the the, the they were defining the Gaussian kernel with this thing, but it's actually it's not it's not valid actually because it's like a, for some for some uh, parameter of the Gaussian kernel they actually define the kernel like for for this one for example you can define the Gaussian kernel using this distance so it's actually kind of a, a, so it's valid but in general it's actually not valid because um it's actually in general it's not it's not possible definitely to define the Gaussian kernel. So it's not clear for which value, which uh, like band width of the Gaussian kernel we can we can define we can define it uh, using using this distance. So it's not it's not clear, but it's it's for sure it's not it's not true for every bandwidth. But anyway, they apply for they they applied and I think I think they got lucky with some uh, some bandwidth so it possibly happened. So they actually they use it. What some of the machine actually with this uh, with this uh, with this distance. So, but like, so it's just kind of similar to before. We said we have like two, except now that we have a very natural way to be to include the mean, because before we didn't have a natural way to have to, to include the mean, but this one we have a very uh, kind of natural way to have the mean in, in. And we have interpolation as well, which is actually quite nice. Um, So now we can also yeah, we can also use this to defy um uh, we can do, we can define it's a, it's a Gaussian processes. So okay, so one way, so suppose we have like a, a, a Gaussian process here, or like with the mean, with the mean uh and 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 a Gaussian function k. So so this one process k here is also a positive method, right? So we have and that's uh, suppose we have we assume that the mean like our sub t is about like a compact metric space, for example, like the interval of zero to one, for example. I suppose we have this uh, the, uh, the, the function, the, this mean function here, the square function is less than infinity, and then, then this uh, k t t d mu a t here is less than infinity. And so actually, that's like a, has been a kind of a classical work. Actually, there's a one to one to one correspondence between Gaussian processes uh, with the mean uh, function m and, and uh, Gaussian function k and the Gaussian measures on the Hilbert space uh, L2 t mu. With, with the mean m and the, with the covariance of uh, um, uh, operator ck, it's given by this uh, with with the kernel precisely with the kernel k as the uh, as the as a kernel of this operator, this integral operator, and so that's the one to one correspondence. And we can actually so we can actually so we can uh, we can actually define the we can define the distance between the Gaussian process by the, by the distance between the, the corresponding Gaussian measures. So actually, there has been a lot of a lot of work actually along along this line, but they were using um. They were using like uh, a lot of work actually using the Hilbert Schmidt distance, and uh, recently people also like kind of work on using the, the Wasserstein distance and also on the, also the Peyer divergence. So we can actually so we can we can actually define the kind of the, the kind of the distance between the Gaussian distance using using this. Uh, so so for example, for the Lock Hilbert Schmidt distance, we can define using the uh, the distance between the Lock Hilbert Schmidt distance between the covariance uh, operator of the of the Gaussian processes and also for the same for the applying very minimal distance and the Wasserstein distance and so on. In the same convergence. Oh, uh, so, but, but uh, I think that um, he bash uh, Schmidt um, this time is a uh, how to say it, a generated uh, strong topology and the master style uh, matrix they generate a uh, weak topology. So they are completely different. Yeah. So so they are, they are, So that's why we are going to explore it. Actually, kind of there there are there are very different uh, there are different kind of. Uh, so a lot of a lot of these things are actually quite recent, and uh, and so uh, there's there's still a lot of work to be to be done actually. So um, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna present some 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 things uh, next. Okay, I'm gonna okay, present okay. something next. Yeah, on the uh, on the convergence actually. I'm gonna be talking on the on the convergence now. So now the convergence of the uh, the lab campus mid distance. So, gonna, okay, so so if we have like the uh, um, okay, two Gaussian measures with uh, Okay. For example, with uh, with uh, Professor Voigt, uh, Diane and I, and so the use we use the lock Hilbert Schmidt distance for some of that. It converges in the in the Hilbert Schmidt norm. And so as a similar results actually hold for the for the for for fixed like uh, regularization in the parameter gamma. We can do the same thing for the sorry. We can do this. Uh, we have similar results for the apply invariant distance as well. And um, and so the nice thing about this uh, Hilbert Schmidt distance is actually we can uh, converge on this. Actually, we can apply a lot of large numbers for uh, for to obtain like sample complexity We're using for for Hilbert space value random variables to obtain sample complexity. And I'm going to go to the Wasserstein distance in just a little bit. So now compared to the Wasserstein distance, actually the converge is um, in the uh, in the trace class norm actually. So. So with this, actually, I, I have a, for the synchron divergence, also we also have the convergence in the Hilbert-Schmidt norm. So if the 
if we have a sequence of covariance for the convergence of the Hilbert Schmidt norm, then the sigma divergence will converge at the same for the Hilbert Schmidt distance. But it's not the case for the uh, for the Wasserstein distance. The Wasserstein distance actually converges in if they all leave the uh, the covariance operators converges in the trace class norm. So so we actually so with the, the Hilbert Schmidt uh, norm is actually very nice because it's the Hilbert space uh, uh, value. Uh, it's the Hilbert space norm, so we can we can apply like law of large number for Hilbert space value random variables, but it's but I don't know whether they actually we can we have results for this uh, for the chess class norm because there are results with the um, with the kind of the, the two smooth Banach space uh, norms. But I'm not quite sure whether you can actually uh, we can actually do something with the chess class norm. So this is one of the time I was I was thinking I was thinking about. So now so because because we have all of this uh, because we have this Hilbert Schmidt uh, convergence we can actually. We can actually uh, try to estimate like this, this the distance between the two uh, two uh, Gaussian processing coherence operator using using the corresponding distance between the uh, normalized uh, um, kind of coherence uh, uh, coherence matrix, non normalized coherence, finite dimensional coherence matrix. So this is like the gram matrix, except that we have what the one over m here. So it's not just k k one, that's the one over m k one. It's, so we can we can do this for like for the Hilbert distance. We can do this for the log Hilbert Schmidt and, and the pi and the distance and so on. The Schiffer divergence and this the convergence will be uh, dimension independent. And it's not the case with the Wasserstein distance that we have the convergence, but it's not dimension independent. Okay. Now, uh, okay, I, I probably would not go into detail because uh, basically, um, so uh, okay, I will not go into detail. But basically, these these are like operators in L two and these are kind of objects in in in, in RM. So uh, the the, dive, the convergence is not so direct. What we do is actually we can apply that we can something on the we apply the RKHS covariance and cross covariance operators. We have um, I, probably I will skip this slide bit, um, so that we, we express everything in terms of the RKHS covariance operators actually. Okay, so now because it's actually part of okay, so this is the this is the convergence of the uh, the, the lock number Schmidt distance. Uh, so here, this is a finite dimensional version, and this is the infinite dimensional version. And this we can show that this is and this is a greater convergence. So it's it's basically so it, it's dimension independent because there's no dimension here. So it just depends on the uh, on the so kappa here is like kind of the maximum of the of the, of the, of the kernel, actually. and just uh, an m here is a sample size. So we have dimension independent convergence for the Laplace Smith distance, and we also have something similar for the affine and variant Riemannian distance. Also, it's kind of it's more complicated than this. Basically, uh, kind of a similar, very similar form of uh, convergence, and the same thing for the synchron divergence. Also, like dimension independent, not not so with the versus time distance, okay? because because as I said before, now for, for the versus time distance, the problem is that as I said before, it doesn't con uh, it doesn't con it converges in the here in the first class norms, but not in the Hindu spinner, and uh, and so at least of the analysis that I have is. Dimension dependent, so it, it depends on. Uh, so this one actually, you're assuming that at least one of the one of the uh, one of the you know, kernel uh, uh, generates a finite dimensional RKHS. So in this case, it depends on the dimension. So, it's, so all the other ones are dimension independent, except for this one is dimension dependent. So now uh, I'm going to present. Okay, so because actually my time is running out. Because of, uh, uh, and so this one, I said, so we, we generate, we compute the distance, we, we estimate the distance between the covariance operators using the, uh, you know, the, uh, the finite dimensional uh, covariance matrices, you know, normalized finite dimensional covariance matrices. Now, of course, in general, we, we do not know this K1 and K2. So we, because if we are given like, for example, two, two uh, Gaussian processes, we actually do not know the, uh, if we are like just sh shown like two random Gaussian processes, we don't, we don't know the, the, the kernel K actually. So we have to estimate this actually. So in general, we have to estimate it. So kind of my, my next few slides are just about estimating this, but uh, I mean, they are not so important actually. I would just go, go to show you some, um, some examples. So now this is the first example. So here I compute the, uh, uh, the list of the, the, the kind of the versus fine distance and the Shinkan divergence and the uh, mean maximum discrepancy between uh, uh, using, using, the, um, using the RKHS uh, governance of the mean, the mean vector. And so, so we have two data sets generated by the, by the same, on the left, we have two data sets generated by the same mixture of two Gaussian distribution in, on R5. So the, the distance would be zero, so it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes zero. So here we have the Wasserstein distance, and here we have the, 
Synchron divergence with epsilon equals zero point zero one. Here we have synchron divergence with epsilon equals zero. Oh, sorry, this is zero point um, uh, zero point zero one. This is point zero one, and this is the maximum mean mean discrepancy. So now, the, so they all should go to zero, right? But uh, you can we can see that actually kind of the uh, the uh, the MMD goes to zero very fast, and then so the synchron divergence also goes to zero pretty fast. But the process time is actually converges quite slowly. And so this uh, kind of similar here. So this one, uh, this one here, kind of the uh, the, two, the data set that generated the two different mixtures of Gaussian distribution. So the the distance should be non-zero. And so also we can we can see that they all both they all converge into something. But uh, again, the process time distance actually converges quite slowly. So this is the first uh, the first uh, example. And this one is actually kind of the distance uh, completely the distance between the Gaussian processes. So in this case, like P is equal to 0 0.1, and then we come to this one is actually the, the kernel of the partial process with kernel, uh, just uh, like Laplacian kernel and uh, the partial process. You can see that like the samples of the partial process with the Laplacian kernel, the samples of the partial process with the Gaussian kernel. And here are the distances between them, uh, with the affine distance and the Laplacian distance. So actually quite close to each other. And here the number of sample passes equal to uh, to 10, uh, 20, and, and 1,000. So like with, with the increasing number of sample paths, we have the convergence here, the, kind of the, the distance. So as if it's kind of similar, except that we have uh, like two different uh, um, processes with, the, with two different Laplace kernel, basically, so kind of slightly different. And uh, again, this is the kind of like the distance given various increasing number of sample paths. Oh, and this one here is kind of indicate like the kind of the dimension, uh, the different dimensions. So here we actually uh, have dimension five. It's, uh, the dimension, dimension, this is dimension D equal to one, dimension D equal to five, and here dimension D is equal to 50. So you can see actually this is uh, the, uh, the Himbush, uh, the Himbush mid distance, and it's a uh, synchron divergence, and it's the uh, Wasserstein distance. This is equal to D equal to five, and this is equal to D equal to 50. So one of the behavior of the, the Himbush bit and synchron divergence is actually quite consistent across the different uh, dimension. Whereas for the uh, for the process time, this and it does depend uh, it, on on the on the dimension. So I don't think we have a dimension uh, independent convergence for the process time. Um, but we have dimension independent convergence for the, all the other for the, all the other distances. So this one is actually a very uh, kind of uh, simple example. So very simple examples to uh, to kind of indicate uh, to to kind of to show the. So here we actually show like uh, we have uh, two Gaussian process here with the on on the uh, generated by the uh, kind of a, this is like the Gauss Markov uh, process that we need to do here sigma here, and here we dimension equal to D to the one and D to the five here. So this is Himbushmi, and this is the other style, and the synchron and, and local Himbushmi and find that in. Now you can actually see here that the, for the dimension, when the dimension is large uh, in this example, now this is a very simple example, so I'm not going to generalize anything, but the, the performance of the other style is actually uh, kind of decreases quite a bit, which so is um, compared to the other, the other distances. So just a summary. This is a summary. So we have uh, I have a generalization of the Riemann, so we kind of consider the generalization of the Riemann distance between Gaussian measures from Iran to the Himbo space setting. So we're talking about the FI invariant Riemannian distance, the local local distance. Um, uh, so I didn't talk about the log net divergence. We have kind of similar ideas. So we do regularization, and then and with the process time distance, like the entropic regularization actually is uh, uh, quite nice uh, theoretical properties, and we can show that they, they have a Himbo Schmidt convergence. Which lead to dimension dimension independent sample complexities for the various uh, uh, regular right distances, so except for the versus line distance. And actually, many more many more results can be uh, can be obtained actually. So uh, anyway, so that's uh, what, what I uh, what, so, so that's all I have that's all I have to say. But I I kind of skip a lot of material. But anyway, so hopefully it's uh, it's uh, uh, okay. <laughs> so thank yes, you for thank listening. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. That's let the uh, let the time speak. Uh, yeah, you finish. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, any so more questions? So, anybody have some question? You are Miss. Yes. No, no. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so, so let me uh, the, uh, ask a question. Could you return to the uh, previous page? 
Yes, yeah, so where you say yeah. the test. Yes, that's that. So, uh, so, 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 so that alpha invariant that you mean that's a um, generalization of feature raw metric, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, then you have the uh, uh, very good because uh, no error. No, but this one is a very simple example. So it's, uh, I'm going to show you a very simple example. So it's, I, as I said, actually, it's kind of a very, uh, because I just have like, as I, kind of, I just generated like 110 kind of different uh, operators section, but there's no noise in this case. So it's actually, um, it's kind of hard to, to generalize. Uh, so I don't, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show like a simple example. So it's kind of hard to make a generalization actually. But in the in the uh, uh, in the um, in the brain computer interfaces uh, applications, uh, this uh, like Fisher Rao or Phi invariant Riemann distance actually is uh, often shown to have the best performance of all distances and divergences, and it's actually much better than the Wasserstein distance, for example. Yes. So, um, so it actually has, it has been it has been shown in 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 in, in various applications. Well, the example I show here is, as I said, it's actually kind of too simple because there's no noise or anything, so it's uh, it's too clean, it's too clean. So I, it's, it's hard to make a generalization based on this uh, example. But it, like for for the real application, in, 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 the, actually, this is a finite dimensional setting. Actually, not the not the infinite dimension. The finite dimension. This actually just just like for covariance matrix is actually for the um, for so for some for various application brain computer interface. It's actually this uh, this one is actually uh, kind of has been shown to have the best performance. So only that like, kind, of, uh, kind of experimental no theoretical proof of the convergence later. Um, yeah, for, for them, it's really has been like really kind of uh, kind of experimental validation. Uh, it's um, it's kind of because actually they have a lot of uh, there are a lot of different um, elements in the in the in the, in the application. Actually, there are a lot of different elements in the setting because they they also do a lot of pre processing as well. So um, so it's kind of it's harder to do the analysis, I think. Uh, but also like they have like a lot of different various different settings actually very different. Uh, so one has to be very careful, actually, one has to be very, yeah. also like well, for some of the applicants, they have like small data sets, so it's, it's hard to, to say. Uh, also, like, for example, like we have with the lower collision distance and the him and the Fubinus distance, for example, we can we can use a Gaussian, we can use a, we can use a super vector machine and Gaussian kernel and so on. So it's, it's not the case with the uh, with the uh, like the Fischer distance because we cannot always use this. So there there are various kind of uh, like trade offs actually. There are, um, so so in the session it, 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 it seems like nothing is perfect. I would say there's nothing that seems to be seem to be perfect. Uh, also like the other distances are much faster to compute. For example. Uh, and also, like for example, with the uh, with the Bourette uh, versus Stein distance, it's always well defined because it's a, it can be singular as well. For for example, if we want to compute the, the Fisher Rao distance, we have to have a um, non singular covariance matrix. Just even in the parameters, we have to have a non singular covariance matrix, and it's it's uh, it's not always like, and we don't have to have that in in, in the uh, for the for the him for the for the distance or the uh, versus Stein distance because it's always well defined. It doesn't matter whether the, Covariance matrix is uh, singular or not, so uh, so so that so that it also has its uh, an advantage, um, and it's kind of similar for the KN divergence because actually for the for the KN divergence we also need um, the non singularity where we, we like one thing has to be kind of absolutely continuous with respect to the other which to be for the KN divergence to be well defined. And in the case of in the case of the um, in the infinite by shopping setting, for example, it's either zero or or in or it's either uh, they are either equivalent or they are mutually singular, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of also hard to, um, whereas for the, for the versus time distance, always modified. You can always compute it. But I agree that, you know, we should, we should have like probably more like theoretical analysis so as much as we can for, for, for everything. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Dad, do you have some questions? Yeah, very interesting the talk there. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I I just wondering uh, so yeah, you, you apply the regularization the that put the lambda uh, positive yeah. uh, and you usually the lambda very small like the ten power to minus uh, seventeen yeah yeah so actually uh well, for, for the for the for the actually I didn't show the k on diverge but actually for the k for the example of the k on diverge you can show that actually when we have the um, 
should go uh, if, if we have like two, for example, if we have two equivalent, uh, if we have actually two equivalent Gaussian measures, actually, then when gamma goes to zero, actually, the um, this is like the log that divergence, divergence, and when gamma goes to zero, we actually have the uh, it's actually we recover the Gaussian divergence between, between the Gaussian measures if we do this regularization gamma here. Mm -hmm. So in, in this so in this setting actually uh, ideally gamma should be if, if the uh, Gaussian measures are equivalent for example in this setting actually the gamma should be equal to zero. Um, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So in the applications uh, in the applications actually the gamma is, is kind of cross validated actually. So the so the gamma like that, that is used in application is actually is kind of like, like depends on the. Uh, it depends on the optimal on, on the uh, kind of the optimization actually, when we do the, uh, the computation actually. so it depends on data mm. but normally it's actually quite small I see. so what we do is so yeah so uh, no, i agree that well, probably that, that should be like a theoretical gamma as so like optimal theoretical gamma as well so at the moment i don't know what the theoretical gamma is uh, in this setting uh, in the ideal setting when when we have an equivalent measure that it should be equal to zero but um um it's often like it's actually chosen like by, by cost validation, but that, that yeah, but that should be like a, a better way to choose it than to, to, to compute it. And for your future work, you would like to extend the Gaussian process uh, to which kind of process? Also, or... <laughs> well, <laughs> so uh, so I have to think about there are actually because there are there are many things that need to be done that need to be to be made clear. Actually, I would like to be able to apply to to, to kind of uh, because nowadays they actually they're talking about like the nation neural networks as well mm -hmm. and they, they are computing the um kind of the k on divergence um uh, but like they have the, the neuro uh, neural processes and so i'm kind of thinking about like, something the neural process more general. Yeah. Uh, some type yeah. Jump, yeah. so it's yeah. the levy process so so um so there are i mean i actually i welcome ideas actually i welcome ideas and suggestions so um but there, yeah, there are a lot of other things. Actually, there are a lot of different there are a lot of different divergences and, 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 and distances divergence, and it's, it's still actually not clear which one. You know, we, we actually would like to be able to have a kind of a theoretical way, or at least like um, maybe an opti an optimization, something like that to, to choose. Um, because actually, so like this divergence here, this uh uh divergence, uh, really divergence, we actually have something called the alpha beta log divergence. So actually, in the in the uh, final dimension settings. Um, Maria and Chichoki actually had a paper like, some years ago on you know, something called the alpha beta log divergence. So yeah, unifies like the you know the various distances, like well, all the all the divergences. So we have uh, all the log divergences and the and the um, and the and the um, and the special round distance actually in a family. And so we can do that uh, in the infinite dimension setting as well. We have the alpha beta log divergence. We can unify uh, these distances as well. So in, they are belong to the same family. And actually, this. Uh, this alpha beta log that divergence actually it induces the um, um this affi invariant Riemannian matrix. So they actually they all they all you know, so this all the like, k divergence Riemannian is more example. If you did decimally, they actually all, in, all induces the affi invariant Riemannian matrix. And so we have a pretty general uh, uh, so this one is already kind of a pretty general family, but there are very other uh, various other um, distance and, and, and divergence as well. So, so I think we, we need to have a, a theoretical way to, to kind of to, to show actually that which one is kind of better for 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 a particular application. At the moment, it's still like basically we are still doing it kind of from a application, right? Depending on the application. So we, for example, some people know that well, well, for this application we know that this one is better, but but still like you know it's um, it's not mathematically actually kind of uh, motivated, but right? we still don't. Um, we still don't have uh, a lot of um, ideas actually about which one is actually supposed to be the best. So, like we know, so for, for, for example, we still do a lot of like um, mm -hmm. testing, for example, using the very distances that we have, like the Hilbert speed distance here, and then we have the log of linear distance. And so, this one I have got the accuracy is equal to this, and the other one is the accuracy. Is that. So, we, we know which one is better, but still, we don't have, we don't have a, a a very good way actually to really show that we should use this distance theoretically. <laughs> but actually, I think the Dr. Van also has a lot of ideas like uh, for the various distances, like for the kind of the uh, Kayan divergence and the Bessel Stein distance, actually. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, 
say it, but uh, let it uh, discuss later after the talk, right? Maybe so it's uh, stay <laughs> discuss uh, and something more. But okay. if, if there's no more questions, let us thank the speaker again. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>